Hey friend, Cloud Bart here. You know, I get asked all the time, hey Bart, what's the best way to get into cloud computing? Or where should I get started if I want to get into cloud computing? <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, starting off, the best thing to know is that if you're getting into information technology, you're already getting into cloud computing. <laughs> so stick with me in the video ahead. We're gonna talk a little bit about what I see as some of the best paths, and indeed that kind of parallels some of what I've done in my career to get you into cloud computing and to keep you excited about a career in cloud computing. Kind of starting right off, the biggest thing I try to recognize is that there's really uh, three different paths <laughs> that I see people coming to the cloud from. The first one would be a beginner. So this is someone who is new to IT. So this is someone that's coming out of, maybe out of school, maybe moving from some non-technical industry into the information tech world, and they're looking to get into cloud computing. Now, as you heard me mention just a minute ago, if you're getting into IT, you're already getting into cloud. And that's because ultimately when we think about it, there's really three different technologies that are happening there. You're talking about virtualization, you're talking about networking, and you're talking about automation coming together. So if you're gonna do anything in the cloud computing world, you're gonna end up touching these three different facets of technology. And those are some really big categories. We're thinking about hypervisors, supporting the hardware that might be running these systems, virtualized storage, virtualized networks as well. All great underlying principles. And so if it's your first chance to get into cloud computing, or if you're moving from somewhere else in IT, start by evaluating where you stand on those three different technologies. So if you're really comfortable with them, that's already a great starting point. If you're just getting into it and figuring out what your course load should look like, make sure that these technologies land on your plate somewhere. If it's virtualization, remember there's a lot of different types of hypervisors and virtualization solutions out there. So brushing up on this is a great place to start. It could mean running and managing these systems on your own. It could mean starting with a cloud vendor somewhere out there and using their virtual infrastructure. The point is we need to begin understanding uh, this abstraction that virtualization provides. After that, networking makes all of the connectivity happen for us, whether that's in a data center that someone is running in their own organization or connecting over the internet out to cloud-based services. The point being that networking is kind of that fundamental uh, connective tissue between how all of these different systems, services, users, <laughs> and applications and functionality get connected together. So if networking isn't on your plate yet, then absolutely make sure that there's a healthy helping coming your way. After that, when I look at automation, I'm thinking of the many different facets of automation. This could be writing software, it could be scripting, it could be using uh, infrastructure as code services, it could be using continuous integration or deployment pipelines. The point is beginning to understand the principles of automation and then understanding some of the ways that these frameworks and languages facilitate that is a very important hallmark of getting into cloud computing. So if you find yourself in the beginner paradigm and you're looking what to get into, these are the three areas of technology. Beyond that, the other big part I try to get people thinking about are the operating systems. When it comes down to a career in cloud computing, you wanna recognize that you are not just using services, you are supporting a business by supporting the applications that they use. And so as much understanding as we can gain about the applications and the operating systems that run those applications, uh, the better we can get in a position to help support support the businesses themselves. And I'll tell you right now, that is the number one secret to success in IT is making sure that you make yourself indispensable to the business <laughs> and solve problems for them. Because IT will change, the tech will change, the tools and problems will change, uh, but ultimately it's about addressing the business's concerns. So as a beginner looking to get into this world, this means choosing one of the two different paradigms, Windows administration or Linux administration. If you can pick one of those operating systems or if you already have some background in those environments, then you're in a good starting point. If you're not there yet, then consider looking at Linux administration or looking at Windows domain administration. This is gonna ensure that you understand some of the operating environments in which these modern applications run. Now, the other side of this would be if you're not a beginner, maybe you're coming from existing IT professionals. My big advice for you is to consider what you are strong at already and also pair that up with what you think as far as an objective. And this kind of goes across the board. I encourage users to consider, first of all, where in the world they want to work. Think specifically geography. <laughs> do you want to run uh, work in your own town? Do you want to work overseas? Do you want to work in the United States? Do you want to work in Europe? Okay, once you establish where you might try to work, after that you could begin considering the types of organizations or industries that you might want to be a part of. 
So consider, is it information technology uh, just as a core service? Are you supporting developers? Do you want to work in healthcare? Do you want to work in finance? Do you want to work in some other production and manufacturing world? The point is picking the where and then picking the industry helps you begin narrowing your search down. And I tell you, friends, you can't start this process too soon. The earlier you decide what your objectives are, the better you can tailor some of these different paths that I'm talking about. Now, if you're coming from the existing IT world, odds are you've already been in one of the uh, main camps. You're either doing some sort of desktop support or uh, front support or maybe ticket desk. You're maybe you're doing networking support. Maybe you're in some sort of a developer facilitation role. The point behind it is to consider what you know best and then how to pair up some of these other technologies with your understanding. So if you already are strong in networking, but you haven't been exposed to automation and virtualization as much, boom, that's your task. Go ahead and get to it and consider some of the different paths that allow you to reach those goals. The third category that I wanted to talk about on here would be outside of IT. So maybe you're in a business supporting role, you're a project manager, you're working with a business that has technical services, or you want to get closer to delivering, implementing, designing, and supporting the technical services. This is actually possibly one of the best sides of IT to start with, especially for cloud. The closer you are to the business and the further you are outside of IT, the better your perspective is already tailored to what the business needs. And this is definitely going to be something that you would want to consider a talking point as you go into hiring situations. A individual who understands a business dynamic, when we think about capital flow, asset management, the delivery and leveraging of those resources to solve problems for the business, okay, that is a great angle to come at when you're looking at an IT position. So along those lines, if you're coming from outside of IT, you definitely need to evaluate just how technical you are to begin with. It may be that you want to be closer to managing technical projects. And for that, you might consider a project management certification, which would allow you to go further from uh, just the uh, administrative side that you're in now into maybe the more directly technical management side of it. If you really want to get into some of the hardcore tech, then looking at virtualization network and automation is going to be very similar to that beginner path. You want to begin understanding some of the basic technologies that make these applications work in the environments that support them. As you begin that journey, keep refining your understanding here and again, looking at your objectives. Where do you want to work in the world? What industries do you want to be a part of? And then what job roles do you think might be a good fit? And so kind of across these last three pieces and to wrap up this little look at uh, getting started with cloud computing, I always go back to the objectives. Identify a role. It could be your wildest dreams. I really want to do this one specific thing over here with these five things, okay? Identify those roles and look at those job requirements. Identify what it is that they're expecting you to know when you come through the hiring process, and then tailor your studies to meet those specific needs. This is exactly the pattern that I've taken over the years, and it's led me through everything from help desk all the way up to software development support, now into the world of training, and now I'm a self-employed consultant and a trainer still, <laughs> all these years later, constantly building on the flexibility of what I've learned before. So the last section that I wanted to talk about here were just some basic starting points. So if you find yourself in any of these camps, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit here. Uh, you might be thinking, I, I think certification could be useful for me. I especially like the challenge and study aspects of it. That's a great place to start. Uh, I do encourage people to consider first off some of the CompTIA certifications. Okay, this is exactly where I started. So this would be like your A+, plus, your Net+, plus. you could also look at the Security+, plus, and there is also uh, a Cloud Essentials and a Cloud Plus as well. So these certifications in general are a great fit because they're not usually vendor specific. So instead of just learning Linux or just learning a Windows environment or just learning Cisco networking, you're looking at principles that drive the information technology world. Uh, I have taken all of these tests over the years and they are a great place to get started. You definitely are gonna to need to skill up your language. You're gonna be skilling up your understanding and proficiency in talking about architectures and functionality. And all of that plays into any of these three paths, the beginner, the existing IT professional, or someone in the business world outside of IT moving into for, uh, information technology. After that, I would consider your specialization. But don't go after specialization until you have that role or that objective in mind. Getting AWS certified or Azure certified or Google Cloud certified implies that there is some sort of a role that you are trying to pursue. And indeed, if we take a look over uh, online, I've already pulled up some certifications. Here are the Google Cloud certs, and you can see that they're very much role oriented. Engineer, architect, DevOps engineer, collab, machine learning. Okay, so these are the specialties that you're thinking about. And 
starting right out, you might have an idea, but if not, then definitely begin to understand the nature of the work to be done here. Because if we take a look at Microsoft, it's the same story. Developers, data engineers, administrators, architects, and over at AWS, again, the same theme that's happening there as well, role-based and specialty certifications. So you're starting with a very broad understanding, and then you're refining it down to those specialties that might fit and suit your scenario. So just to kind of recap your friends, whether you're a beginner first getting into information technology, moving from somewhere else in IT or coming from somewhere in the business world, everybody is leading themselves down the cloud path. All information tech roads eventually lead to some sort of a cloud uh, career. And the reason I say this is because of the dependence on those three underlying technologies virtualization, networking, and automation. So if you're getting into IT, you're getting into cloud already, and you're gonna to be touching those technologies. The other pieces that we talked about too were some of the non-vendor specific certifications like CompTIA. I think they are a great starting point. It's exactly where my career began, and it gave me a great chance to jump into organizations and begin moving up through the roles and positions that they made available. One final tip is always ask questions. If there's someone doing work that you like and you think it might be a good fit, find out what it took for them to get there and what they think you should be studying. Beyond that, recognize two friends that information technology is a never ending arc of transformation. <laughs> so developing good learning skills and the ability to work closely to businesses to solve their problems is gonna go very far regardless of which information tech path you end up down. Beyond that, I hope you'll subscribe and check out the rest of the videos that I have here. I'm a big AWS fan, but I also do a lot of training at CBT Nuggets as well. And cloud computing is one of the most important areas of information technology and one of the most important tool sets that we have available to solve problems with right now. I get excited about it. I hope you're excited as well. So stick with me, friends. We'll see you in the cloud.